Hello my friend, I'm Reverend Walker with Alpha Church. We serve God, the Heavenly Father who loves us, Jesus Christ who's died for us. He's given his very life to save us, to redeem us from our sins, and to set us right into service with him and the Holy Spirit, which is the blessing of the presence of Jesus Christ within us, guiding us, strengthening us, and sending us forward Let's pray together. Gracious Heavenly Father, praise be to you that we worship like this with you today and help us to learn, help us to receive that that you have to give to us, to redeem us, to forgive us, and to love us. And Lord, we love Jesus Christ. Thank you for giving us him as our Savior and Redeemer. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Our scripture reading today is from Acts chapter 9, verse 31. Then the church throughout Judea, Galilee, and Samaria enjoyed a time of peace. It was strengthened and encouraged by the Holy Spirit. It grew in numbers, living in the fear of the Lord. God bless the reading and hearing of the scriptures today. So Paul had become a disciple for Jesus Christ. Barnabas and Saul had gone into Damascus and there Paul had preached Jesus Christ, that he had seen Jesus Christ. He knew it was Jesus Christ because of the scars on his hands. The resurrected Christ came to Saul and convinced him to turn his life around and give his life in service to Jesus Christ. This he did. He preached the resurrection. He preached redemption to give ourselves to Jesus, the living Lord, so that we might serve him with all the days of our lives and the strength that Jesus gives us, not only for the present characteristics that we have built within us, but those that Heavenly Father enhances and creates within us so that we are a new living being in Jesus Christ. And Paul preached the Holy Spirit, and with the Holy Spirit, there were healings. There was enlivenment in the church so that the fear of the Lord also led them to the joy of the Lord. And the joy that they found was in the rejoicing of what Jesus, the living Christ, was doing in their society and in their community and in their towns. Then Saul and Barnabas go to Jerusalem, those in Jerusalem don't believe that Saul has really changed. He was a persecutor of Christians, and so they persecute Saul. And then Barnabas stands up for Saul, and Saul then is freed from the persecution there and is supported. But there were those that came after Saul, and the brothers, the Christians, come, and they protect Saul. And from that time on, there is peace throughout because the Christians are multiplying in unbelievable numbers that the joy of Christ's peace within them created the ancient church that was the beginnings of all churches today. And that is our heritage and we claim that and we rejoice in that because our heritage of the first beginnings of how we join together in Holy Communion and also in worship of the Lord continually and continually in prayer, continually talking with Jesus Christ and gaining that direction by the Holy Spirit of what the church should be doing next and where the church should be going. And so they scatter, they scatter out and they take the word of Jesus Christ to many places. That same experience is something that Jesus calls us to today because think about it. In your community, do you know of your neighbors who are Christians and who aren't Christians? Do you know how great an influence your love for Jesus Christ and your witness with your life and your family's lives are to those who don't know Christ and, and the invitation that you extend to others are vitally important. Our scripture today talks about the Holy Spirit, how the Holy Spirit caused the church to grow in numbers. The Holy Spirit today is causing 
the believers in Jesus Christ to grow in numbers, and that occurs through an invitation. The Holy Spirit will put words in your mouth. The Holy Spirit will put a burning flame in your heart for others to know Jesus. Just the other day, I was walking the neighborhood with the little Timothy, my dog, and met a neighbor, and we, we spoke so easily. And I said to him, do you know Jesus Christ? He said, I sure do. And I've known him since I was just a little lad. And we rejoiced together in that. Christians are everywhere, and yet there are still some who don't know Christ. So Paul takes the opportunity to talk about the leadership of Christ in our world, in our lives, and in our communities. And also he talks about the resurrection. He talks about how Jesus makes us right with God so that we then have an avenue to Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father has been pursuing us. Heavenly Father has been waiting for us to turn to Him. Heavenly Father has been anticipating our redemption and our humility and our turning to Him so that we might be believers in Jesus Christ, the only way to Heavenly Father. And then Paul talks about grace, the grace of God, that we are so loved with such abundant love that God's grace, that the door has closed to the past and is open to a new life so that God's grace is so powerful within the body of Christians that Christians then have the freedom to say, I choose to do this, a new thing in my life, and I choose to begin again and start over again. And then Paul talks about faith. We can do all that we can do and stand then in prayer and God takes it. And we trust God, the Heavenly Father, to move and to change the situation for God's good. As Saul's life closes and he says, he says, I have kept the faith. I pray that Jesus Christ instills within you such a burning fire and such a revival within your soul that on your deathbed, when it comes time to go to your glory in heaven, that you will be able to murmur, I have kept the faith. This is our joy, my friend, keeping the faith keeping the faith in Jesus Christ and sharing the faith in Jesus Christ and knowing the faith in Jesus Christ will make a difference for the glory of God in this world for all time. Let's pray together. Gracious Heavenly Father, thank you for renewing us. Thank you for reviving us. Thank you for instilling within us the fiery spirit to tell others in Christ's name, amen. Go in peace, my friend, and may God richly bless you. Amen.